All right, this is the last video that we're going to do for page 1104, pages 26 through 27, Pythagorean's Theorem. Um, I think I probably told you this story in a previous PACE video, but when I went through ACE as a student back in the <clears throat> 1970s and uh, got to the lesson about Pythagorean's Theorem, I thought it was Pythagorean because I didn't have a teacher to give me a lot of pronunciation. That's one of the challenges, right, in doing the paces, is you just read it and you make up your own pronunciations. So I got all the way to college thinking that I knew about the Pythagorean theorem, and then I got to a college math class and the teacher said, how many of you know the Pythagorean theorem? And I'm like, I'd never heard of that before. But as soon as he started explaining it on the board, I said, oh, Pythagorean, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> so, well, inside humor, for those of us who have used the paces, you'll understand that, all right? So the Pythagorean theorem applies to any, this is important, right triangle. So it does not apply to just any random triangle like that, okay? No, we can't do that. But if it's a right triangle, and this little square in the corner means that it is a right angle. And you'll do a lot more with that next year when you do geometry, and we have a lot of videos that'll help you make it through the geometry course next year. <clears throat> But when we have a right triangle, this side, the longest side, opposite the right angle, has a special name. It's called the hypotenuse, okay? So the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. The other two sides are just called legs, the legs of the right triangle. And there's an important truth, and that is that the hypotenuse squared will be equal to the length of the two legs if they're both squared and added together. So let's look at this one. If I add this leg, which is three, squared is nine, okay? <clears throat> and the other leg, which is four squared is 16, what does that equal? It equals 25. And the hypotenuse is five, which happens to also be 25. So 5 squared, 25 squared, it works. Okay? So that works for every triangle. Now here's the key. If the problem tells you that the hypotenuse is a given number, okay, then you have to put that on the left. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm allergic to morning or if I'm uh, catching a cold. So if the hypotenuse is 65, then I have to put that over here on this side, okay? Equals a squared plus, and then they maybe tell me that the other side is 35 squared. Now you can use your calculator to do this, all right? So you'd multiply 65 times 65, get a number, equals a squared plus whatever 35 is, then subtract this from both sides. Okay, and then do the square root button on your key, square root and key, square root key button on your calculator, and uh, you'll have the answer then for a. Let me do a different one here rather than these big numbers. Oh, let's um, <clears throat> let's say that c is ten and side A is 3, okay? So if C is 10, then 10 squared equals A squared plus 3 squared. A squared plus 9, and this would be 100, all right? So then you subtract 9 from 100 and get 91 is A squared, and then we do the square root of both sides, so A equals the square root of 91, and you can actually just leave the answer like that, okay? So they only have a couple problems um, on this lesson that will have you actually solving some, but the key is to uh, notice if it tells you what the hypotenuse is, you have to plug it in for C. If they tell you the two legs, you can plug it in for A and B, and it does not matter which order, okay? And then uh, when you get to the last step, you're almost always gonna have to, in fact, you will have to do the square root of both sides in order to isolate and solve for that letter, that variable. You made it. We are at the end of 11.04, and I'll do a few lessons here hopefully yet today for 11.09, 11.05.